What is, what is the Bambi bucket? More importantly, how did it get its name? Sean, thanks for having us out here to the factory this morning. Many people might not realize what a great local success story this is. Yeah, it's a local company uh, invented by a local uh, man, uh, the founder and owner of SCI. Um, started in the late 70s. Uh, the name came from kind of a ad hoc way. It was through a, a social visit with a uh, um, Bob Fortune who used to work for CBC. And people are and seeing this right now of how it's actually used as well. So keep going. Yeah, so he um, came with the name as uh, you initially thought of SCI Flex for the bucket. And the uh, interviewer was not satisfied with the name. And he said, well, how about we just call it the Bambi bucket? I love it. What are we seeing right now? What we're seeing here is roughly about the second stage of, of manufacturing. Uh, the first stage is a fabric acceptance because we have a high quality standards through our ISO certification. So here we're seeing panels being cut by a laser guided cutter. Okay, let's make our way to the next one. How big is the factory, by the way? Uh, it's about 50,000 square feet. Um, the capacity is about 70 to 100 employees. Uh, we ramp up during busy times and scale down in slower times. Wow, let's take a look at what's happening over here. What's this stage? Uh, right here is uh, what we see is after the panels are cut, then we sew in the sewing department here this uh, high strength, has a very high tensile breaking rate of a, a webbing that holds most of the tensile load of the, the bucket when it's full of water. Let's make our way to the next okay. step as we do that. Um, just quickly, how many might you make? Or how long does it take to make one? Uh, it takes uh, approximately a day to two, maybe three, depending on uh, how, what size and what model of bucket. And how many might you make? Uh, we make anywhere between 350 to 500 a year. And what's this stage here? Here is the yeah, radio frequency welding. You can see on the right there, there's the, uh, the webbing that's been sewn in. Now we weld the, uh, the two pieces of fabric together. So the, the actual bond of the weld is stronger than the fabric itself. Well, Jody uh, and Riaz, we're going to continue to make our Bambi buckets throughout the morning here on BT and Delta. Yeah, great local success story. I mean, we've seen these Bambi buckets being used, especially fighting some of the, the wildfires and any of the forest fires. And now we're sort of getting a preview of how they're made. So prior to uh, us uh, finishing up last time, we were doing a bit of the welding type of thing, right? Yes. Yeah, once the panels are welded, um, we put the, the shell, do the final shell assembly. Um, before we go there though, I wanted to show this valve. The valve is one of the, the key components of the bucket because it's what drops the water. So here we have a, a standard udder valve as we call it. It's original patent design going back to the early 80s. We make more complex valves now to do multiple drops and load shedding, but this is the basic design. So this would be in the bottom of the bucket. The water pressure that's in the bucket itself would push in and close these neoprene valve seals here. And hand sewn. And hand sewn, yes. How many employees do you have working here? Uh, approximately 80 to 100. Okay, yeah. wow, that's a, that's a pretty big uh, group of people. And right now, what are we seeing? So here we're seeing, now that we've done the radio frequency welding on the uh, panels, now they're using a, a Miller heat welder to do the, the, the final close. And so once these raw shells are, are welded, we'll be putting them over here and maintaining an inventory of, of raw shells that are ready to go to final assembly when we get orders. The reason we do that is this is a long lead time item, so we want to be ready for when we get orders, especially during fire season. We've seen how it's assembled. Next, we are going to be actually testing the Bambi bucket here on BT. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Yeah, and you know, provides these buckets uh, really internationally, Sean. Uh, for how many countries? Uh, we sold to 110 different countries to date over the 30 year period. And how many different sizes of buckets? I mean, we got one right now, just getting ready to be tested. We won't put it down yet, but how many sizes yeah, of buckets? Yeah, this is our sec this is one of our smallest buckets, okay. 72 US, or, uh, 96 US gallons. Our smallest one, 72 US gallons. Our largest is 2,600 US gallons. So we're just getting ready to drop it right now. How many times will these buckets get tested before they're ready to be sent out? Each bucket has to be tested at least five times to ensure that it's adjusted properly before it's dried and shipped to the customer. Now this particular size right here, how much water will that hold? Uh, this is uh, 80 imperial gallons or 96 US gallons. So you're looking at about 800 pounds of water. Uh, generally used for a smaller to uh, intermediate size helicopter. Okay, and to test these, of course, you're obviously testing for leaks, right? So right now yes. we're seeing some water. That's sort of just sort of carry out that's dropping. Yeah, the, when it initially yeah. pulls out, you're getting some uh, spillover from the top that runs down, so it's not actually a leaking valve. Uh, but we are looking for uh, that the udder valve itself is adjusted properly and not leaking. And then we're also looking at how it drops okay, and, and so, how it recoils. And so let's see it drop right now. Jerry's got the finger on the button and... 
that's exactly how it's supposed to look right there. Exactly, and it'll do that, repeat that operation tens of thousands of times through the, the course of its lifespan, which is anywhere between five and 10 years, depending on how the customer looks after it. And we've seen how a lot of it is actually hand sewn, hand welded, I mean, using lasers obviously, but you have a lot of bodies that are working here as well. Um, Everything is hand tested this way as well. We got Jerry. Jerry, you want to give a little wave over here? He's working. He's working the button there. So he's here doing every. every yeah, one. we have different staff to do yeah. uh, bucket testing. Uh, different staff for bucket assembly. Um, all different levels uh, are uh, you know making a good quality product all Ex along the way. Excellent. Well, this is fantastic. How about one more drop? We, we can't see this too many times there, Jody. Reed. How cool is that? They assemble the Bambi bucket, but here at SEI Industries, they do a lot more than that. We're going to find out how they provide certain uh, items to the military coming up next on BT. Yeah, no kidding. And you know, uh, again, SEI Industries here in Delta, the Bambi bucket, you've seen it behind us. We've been working on the assembly all morning long. But, and a lot of people will recognize what that looks like. They'll see it in footage of, you know, wildfires being fought, you know, for the helicopters and all that kind of stuff. But outside of that, most people might not realize the many other products that you uh, do. What other kinds of things do you manufacture here? We do a lot of stuff for remote sites, so refueling and, and water for military, oil and gas, mining, and humanitarian. Okay. And this would be like an example of one of our newest products, the BAT, the Bulk Aviation Transport Tank. It's the first uh, double wall baffled tank that you put inside an aircraft and it allows operators to alleviate or eliminate fuel drums from their operations. Because in the past, or even still possibly, that would be almost like almost like an antiquated yes, thing to exactly. use now. So why would this be better? Because you can kind of deflate it or? Exactly, it, it rolls up when you're done so you can then take backhaul out. At the end of the day, you're transferring fuel to a bulk fuel tank and then you don't have to have all these empty drums you have to crush and take back out. So you actually can utilize the aircraft both directions. And this would be a fairly small one compared to this some of the baby. other ones. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little baby. Uh, let's take a look from above it, what you say is also a baby, uh, but this would be small compared to some what you do. Tell us what we're seeing right now. Okay. This here is the uh, Terra tank. We do a whole bunch of different kinds of collapsible tanks. This is a, a water tank. We do fuel and water. This would be 24,000 gallons, which is approximately half, a little bit under half of what our larger tanks are. Okay, so what kinds of things would you, I mean, I'm assuming you send this where people would need water, yep. obviously. Uh, we talked a little bit of military uses, but what other kinds of uses might you so have? So aid, um, okay. typhoons, earthquakes, any sort of uh, emergency situation, peacekeeping missions are most prominent with the Canadian forces. Anywhere they go, we go. And a lot of other military operations, war on drugs. So we work with the Colombians who are doing drug bases and, and they're fighting that war. They need fuel and water in those locations. We provide the solutions. You know, we, we've learned that to, to create the Bambi bucket, you know, can take anywhere from one to two days. What would it take uh, to create something like this? Uh, it's about a day and a half. Okay. Yeah. And the kind of material it's used in? Uh, it's a urethane, a poly, it's a nylon coated polyurethane. And we have different types, one for fuel, one for water. And they're all proprietary to us, depending on the chemical we're going to store. Wow, what a great local success story here. Again, providing uh, lots of great help to whatever they need, whether it's military, uh, rescue, or of course, uh, fighting fires. Jody and Riaz, uh, again, hanging out here at SEI Industries. Great work out here in Delta.